What's up everyone, Phil here from KO Gaming, and welcome to the first in a series of mini reviews that I'm going to begin doing here in the year of 2016. If there's something that doesn't really warrant a full-fledged review, such as a DLC release, maybe some kind of a re-release, this is where you're going to find my opinions on that kind of stuff, and this is the very first of that series. Today we'll be talking about the first of four DLC packs for Call of Duty Black Ops 3, titled Awakening. This pack includes both a new zombie map called Der Eisenrocken, as well as four new multiplayer maps for competitive play. For those who aren't familiar, Treyarch has really made a name for themselves in the first-person shooter community by releasing really great zombie survival co-op maps for the previous iterations of the Black Ops franchise. Well, Der Eisenrocken is no exception, being an actual throwback to the original zombie survival maps from Call of Duty World at War. That's right, you actually reprise the roles of the original four protagonists from that series and are thrown into a new modernized version of that same kind of old school zombie survival map. It's really cool to see the original four cast members back and to be playing in a more old school style setting is cool as well, especially because the Shadows of Evil map from the release of Black Ops 3 really was a departure from the previous ones in this series. Much like the other Treyarch zombie maps, there's continuity here with all of the previous ones. Even though you are playing as the original four protagonists from the zombie co-op adventures, you're from an alternate dimension where you're actually trying to stop your own selves from going through with some of the things you've done in previous Treyarch zombie maps, including going to the moon, nuking the planet Earth, and stopping the widespread destruction as seen in Black Ops 2 Transit map. So it's a pretty interesting take on trying to fix the mistakes from the past and the previous characters who you've controlled in these zombie co-ops before, and being able to play in this old school setting is really neat. You'll be facing off against endless rounds of zombies, devil dogs, and even the returning big daddy-like creatures that were seen in the Black Ops 2 zombie map Origins. So there's a lot of returning stuff that combines to be pretty awesome, and you're going to find this very similar to the giant remake map from back when Black Ops 3 was released on purpose because it's the same characters and they're trying to continue on with that storyline. But much like the Treyarch zombie maps of the past, it's not just about the plain vanilla survival aspect, but it's all about the easter eggs, and this one is chock full of them. Every one of the protagonists will find a bow and arrow, which not only can they use as a weapon during the course of the survival gameplay, but through their own unique side questing, they can actually power these up to have some really awesome and unique abilities. For example, one of these side quests includes hitting far off targets that seem like they're just part of the background scenery with the bow and arrow, then doing some pretty unique and fun wall running using anti-gravity physics in a crypt, then harvesting souls of dead zombies near urns to power them up, so you can in turn charge up your arrows with electricity, shoot them at targets in the background one final time, and then go down back into the crypt to harvest more zombie souls, power up the arrow, and create a crazy badass electric tornado bow and arrow with ammo that totally tears everything apart. It's pretty damn devastating, and it's awesome once you finally go through all of this work to get these powered up weapons. And the cool thing is, each of the protagonists has one of these, leading to some significant amount of side questing content rather than just focusing on the survival because it's such a long quest line for each one of these main characters. My only real gripe with Duraz and Draken is that some of the steps of the Easter eggs are a little bit too cryptic. Like, not really explaining what it is you're supposed to be collecting in a certain scene, especially when you're trying to listen to this disembodied voice give you the instructions while there's all this chaos and survival stuff going on around you. It could be pretty annoying. And honestly, trying to collect these generic items in this giant environmental map that is one of the biggest ones ever for zombies survival from Treyarch, especially when there's not even an indicator to tell you, oh, hold down square to pick up this skull that kind of looks like all the other skulls on the map. It's a little annoying. It's a minor nitpick. Obviously, Treyarch's done this kind of stuff in the past before. I feel that if they made it a little bit more apparent of what you were supposed to be doing with these Easter eggs, it would be a little bit more enjoyable. But if that is your problem and it really is annoying you, wait a couple days. I'm sure everyone's going to have video walkthroughs out of how to do them, and it won't be too difficult after that. In addition to the new zombie map, you get four new multiplayer maps for competitive play. The first called Splash puts you inside of a water theme park, and it's pretty neat to be running through these different water slides and tubes, to be getting the advantage and drop on your enemies because you ran through a certain area of the park instead of another one. It's a pretty neat map, it's pretty straightforward, doesn't seem too complex, and another one of those maps that kind of has that cool gimmick of, wow, this looks like a really realistic setting, and somewhere where it's really neat to be running around and shooting your enemies. There's a map called Rise, which I really didn't understand the name of. Maybe it's because it's supposed to be a construction site, but there's really nothing that's rising. You're not on a skyscraper or anything like that. So I really didn't get the name, but it seemed like a pretty standard fare for a Call of Duty map. There's also Gauntlet, which features three different climates, as it's supposed to be a combat simulation, where as you run through different portions of the map, you'll either be in a jungle, in almost an arctic tundra setting, and of course, in kind of a more generic city, where you replay typical Call of Duty games. So it's a pretty neat to have all those climates come together. For longtime fans of the Call of Duty series, you're probably going to enjoy the Skyjacked map the most, because it's actually a modernized throwback map of the hijacked map from Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Back then you were on a giant yacht, now you're on this giant airship. And it's very similar in layout to the yacht from the hijacked map. The only difference being there's a couple different high-low variations with underground rooms and kind of higher up rooms. There's also a hole in the side of the ship, which you can actually wall run and dive into, which was a mechanic not present in Black Ops 2. So there's definitely some new additions, variations, and twists on this map that make it a more modernized version of that throwback map. And actually out of the four new maps, I actually enjoyed this one the best, pretty much because I knew where I was doing from the get-go, while the other ones can be a little bit confusing since you've never played on them before. 
So ultimately for the $14.99 price tag for this DLC pack, I have to say that the zombie map is top notch, it's great stuff, being a throwback to the original cast from these zombie maps is an awesome touch, and to basically be continuing on with this con continuity saga of the zombie survival is an awesome thing, getting together with four of your friends and playing this cooperatively, you're gonna have a blast, just like all the previous zombie maps, it's quality stuff. The multiplayer maps, Eh, I really have a hard time justifying the price tag if you're really only buying this expansion for them, especially because the Skyjack map is just a redo of a previous map. It's nice to get variety every few months from Treyarch when you add on these new multiplayer maps, but at the same time, do you really want to be playing 3 to $4 per map? I don't know, I leave it into your own judgment if you think that it's worth it, but definitely if you're into the zombie survival stuff, you're not going to want to miss the Awakening pack just for that one map. It's definitely worth the price tag. So I hope you enjoyed this very first of my mini reviews. I hope that now you have a better idea of what the Awakening DLC pack is and if you'll be interested in checking it out yourself. I'll be covering the future DLC packs for Black Ops 3 as well because I did purchase the season pass back in November and I'm looking forward to the ongoing zombie saga. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and I'll see you next time for another mini review.